Greetings everybody, welcome back to Weekly Wildlife Wisdom. As so far, I've been your host, Zero Yeti, and this week we're going to be doing something interesting. As I noticed that although we've covered around 105 mammals, we've only covered 39 invertebrates, which is a shame. So this week I've decided to cover more invertebrates, starting with the Atlantic Horseshoe Crab, which is also known as the American Horseshoe Crab and is a species of marine and brackish chelicerate arthropod named to the western Atlantic Ocean from the coast of Nova Scotia, Canada in the north to the, Yuc- to the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico in the south. Atlantic horseshoe crabs range from shallow coastal habitats such as lagoons and estuaries as well as mangroves to depths of more than 650 feet and up to 35 miles offshore. They are bottom dwellers which, which shift through the substrate in search of mollusks, worms, other invertebrates, and carrion on which they feed. Reaching up to 2 feet in length and 12 pounds in weight, the Atlantic horseshoe crab is the largest species of horseshoe crab, with both sexes looking as similar, but females are typically 25 to 30% larger than males. Horseshoe crabs have three main body parts, the head region known as the prosoma, the abdominal region known as the optostoma, and the spine tail-like region known as the telson. There are horseshoe their horseshoe-shaped carapace is greenish gray to dark brown in color. Additionally, horseshoe crabs are famous and prized for their blue blood, which is widely used in biomedical sciences for the development of drugs so, uh, because the blood contains a chemical called limulus ambiocyte lysate, or LAL for short. Uh, this can be used to easily detect germs and other endotoxins. Nesting usually follows a cycle of the high tide of the full and new moons, and during the mating period, males will follow and cling to the backs of potential mates using modified prosomal appendages for long periods of time before the egg laying has occurred. Once a mate is found, they will come ashore, where the female digs a hole and lays anywhere from 15,000 to 64,000 eggs, while the male external fertilizes them. Once the eggs are laid, the male and female go back to the ocean, and the eggs develop on their own, hatching several weeks later into miniature versions of the adults. Under ideal conditions, the Atlantic horseshoe crab will reach sexual maturity around 9 years of age, and may live up to 40 years. Next up is the giant tiger snail, also known as the giant African snail, the giant tiger land snail, or the giant land snail. Uh, and the Gigantococcellia is a species of large, air-breathing, terrestrial polymate gastropod moss in the family Achinitinidae. It is named to the tropical rainforests and coastal woodlands throughout Sierra Leone, Liberia, Av- the Ivory Coast, Togo, Benin, Ghana, and Nigeria, where they spend the majority of their time roaming the forest floor, feeding upon nuts, flowers, fruit, stems, and leaves of a variety of plants. Although they are primarily herbivores, giant tiger land snails are also known to consume bones and small insects in order to reach their desired calcium and protein intake needed for their continued survival. Reaching upwards of 10 inches in shell diameter and 15 inches in body length and 2 pounds in weight, the giant tiger land snail is the largest extant land snail species known. They sport a gray body with a conical shell that is yellow, orange, or tan in coloration and sports six to eight distinctive dark zigzag stripes running the length of their shell. This distinctive pattern is the inspiration for their name, tiger. Mating typically occurs just before the rainy season, during which time a snail will approach another snail, and they will see if they reciprocate interest by touching them with their antenna. These snails are hermaphroditic, and during mating, both snails may impregnate each other. Afterward, those impregnated will dig a shallow nest in the forest floor in which they lay up to 200 eggs at a time. These eggs hatch after around 10 to 31 days. Under ideal conditions, the giant tiger land snail will reach sexual maturity around 2 to 3 years of age and live upwards of 10 years. Next up is the North American firefly, also known as the common eastern firefly, the eastern lightning bug, the American moon bug, the golden sparkler, the fire devil, the eastern glow fly, or the big dipper firefly. It is a species of flying bioluminescent beetle with a light organ on the ventral side of its abdomen. It is the most common species of firefly in North America, ranging throughout the United States, southern Canada, and northern Mexico, 
from the eastern seaboard to the Rocky Mountains. Here they inhabit grasslands, forests, croplands, and even parks within cities, typically near bodies of water such as ponds, rivers, and streams. Both the adult and larvae of the North American firefly are carnivorous, typically feeding upon smaller insects, earthworms, and snails. When feeding, they inject a mild poison to immobilize and liquefy their prey, enabling the firefly to easily suck up their meal. North American fireflies are themselves eaten by birds, frogs, toads, lizards, spiders, and other insects, especially the Femme Fatale lightning bug, which lures in male North American fireflies by mimicking the signal of a female of their species. Averaging around 10 to 14 millimeters long, as adults they sport a dark brown exoskeleton with a rounded head cover outlined in yellow and accented with two orange spots. They also have two pairs of wings, with the first pair being a dark brown outline in yellow, and the second being clear. The last segment of the abdomen is the section that lights up, flashing a bright yellow-green color. Mating occurs throughout the summer and during, in early fall, during which time females wait on the ground or in trees for passing males to flash their signal, and then answer with their own specific signal. The, it is this communication that allows the two to find each other and mate after which time a female generally lays around 500 eggs on damp soil. Firefly eggs also emit a slight glow and hatch after around four weeks into flightless larvae commonly known as glowworms. The larvae live one to two years and we can see glowing in damp soil near streams. After passing through the larval stage, the developing firefly moves into chambers in the moist soil and then pupates. While pupating, it undergoes metamorphosis, emerging from the pupa as an adult. As an adult, North American fireflies typically live around 30 days. Next up is the common starfish, also known as the common sea star, the red sea star, or the sugar starfish. It is a species of sea star which is native to the northeastern Atlantic Ocean from the coast of Norway and Sweden in the north, throughout the North Sea, around the coast of Britain, Ireland, Scotland, France, Spain, and Portugal, and southwards along the coast of Africa to Senegal. Uh, it is also known from the western Atlantic, where it occurs between Labrador and Florida, as well as in the Gulf of Mexico. It is capable of surviving in brackish water and prefers to live in rocky and gravelly substrates where it feeds upon mollusks, polychaete worms, barnacles, other encanoderms, and carrion. The common starfish typically average around 4 to 12 inches in diameter, but are known to grow up to 20 inches in diameter under ideal conditions. Uh, it has five arms, each brought at their base and gradually tapering to a point towards the tips, uh, which are often turned up slightly, and there is a line of short white spines running along the center of the aboral or upper surface of the arms with low soft mounds called pupillae on either side. The oral lower surfaces of the arms have rows of small tube feet which are used in locomotion and feeding. The starfish is usually orange or brick red on the aboral surface and paler on the oral surface, but can also be purple, blue, or pale brown, with those from deep water being usually paler. Breeding occurs in spring, during which time females release their eggs into the sea, which each female starfish being estimated to produce around 2.5 million eggs. At the same time, males shed their sperm and fertilization takes place in the water column. Larvae are planktonic and drift for around 87 days before settling onto the seabed, undergoing metamorphosis into juveniles. Under ideal conditions, the common starfish will live up to eight years. Next up is the European mantis, also known as the common praying mantis. Uh, it is a large hemimetabolic insect in the family Mantidae, which can be found throughout Europe, Asia, and Africa, as well as North America, where it is considered introduced. Their common name of praying mantis is derived from the animal's distinctive hunting posture, in which they hold their first pair of legs in a way that resembles traditional praying pose. European mantids are carnivorous ambush predators which feed upon other insects, primarily grasshoppers, crickets, beetles, cockroaches, and smaller mantids. Reaching 7 to 9 centimeters in length, females are usually larger and heavier than males, which reach 5 to 7 centimeters. Both males and females sport elongated bodies with two pairs of wings, a mobile triangular head with large compound eyes above a set of smaller simple eyes, and two pairs of long thin legs. Their most striking feature is their first pair of raptorial legs, which are highly modified for efficient capture, restraint of fast moving and flying prey. Depending on the specific environment, a European mantis may be various shades of green, brown, yellow, or black in coloration. 
Because female mantids typically eat smaller males if given the chance, in order to mate, males must approach, males must approach stealthily from behind, freezing as soon as the female turns her head or even moves. Mantids are very good at detecting moving structures, but are almost unable to see immobile objects. Using the stop and go tactic, a male stalks closer to the female. Uh, this can often take several hours. Once a male is close enough to the female, he opens his wings and jumps on the female's back. Upon landing, he latches on with his raptorial legs and locks their genitals together. After mating for four to five hours, the male then lets go of the female and drops to the ground, immediately sprinting away to avoid being eaten, while the female tries to grab a hold and eat him. Eleven days after mating, the mother will deposit 100 to 200 eggs along branches or grass bundles sometime in September or October, but the eggs overwinter and the larvae do not hatch till the following spring and become adults after undergoing seven to eight molts. Under ideal conditions, a European mantis may live as long as two years. Next up is the giant Gippsland, sa uh, giant Gippsland earthworm, also known as the giant Gippsland sandworm. It is a species of earthworm which is native to the Gippsland region in the southeastern part of the state of Victoria in Australia. They inhabit the subsoil of blue, gray, or red clay soils along stream, break, stream banks and deep within the south and west facing hills. Here they live deep in deep partially flooded burrow systems feeding upon decaying roots, leaves, nematodes, protozoans, rotifers, bacteria, algae, and fungi within the soil. They are capable of reaching upwards of 9 feet in length and 3 pounds in weight. And they are amongst the largest sandworm species, largest earthworm species in the world. Giant Gippsland earthworms sport a dark purple head. A blue-gray body comprised of around 300-400 body segments. Unlike most earthworms, which deposit casings on the surface, they spend most of their time in burrows, even depositing their casings there. They can generally only be flushed out of their burrows by heavy rain. Additionally, they are highly sensitive to above-ground vibrations, uh, and the giant Gippsland worm responds to unknown intruders' footsteps by moving deeper underground. And despite being very sluggish when on the surface, they are capable of burrowing quite rapidly. Because of their enormous size, these sudden movements produce audible squelching noises that can be heard on the surface. Mating occurs once a year during the warmer months deep underground. A hermaphroditic species, both worms will line up beside each other before swapping sperm from their spermacathae chambers and fertilizing each other's egg cocoons. Each giant Gippsland earthworm will produce only one egg cocoon per year. When ready, it lays its egg case within a specific constructed chamber within its own underground burrow system. Within a year, the egg cage hatches. At a foot long at birth, these animals grow at a rate around half a foot per year and under ideal conditions may live upwards of 10 years. And our extinct animal of the week is Anomalocaris, which is an extinct genus of Radiodont, an order of early diverging stem group arthropods which lived during the Cambrian period around 521 to 497 million years ago. Anomalocaris has been misidentified several times over its history in part due to its makeup of being a mixture of mineralized and unmineralized body parts. The mouth and frontal appendages are considerably more hard and more easily fossilized than the rest of the delicate body. The Anomalocaris fossils were first collected in 1886 and 1888 by Richard G. McConnell of the Geological Survey of Canada. These, spe these specimens were described and named in 1892 by paleontologist Joseph Frederick Whitehaves and specimens are now known to represent isolated frontal appendages. But Whitehaves interpreted them as the abdomens of phylocarid crustaceans, noting its unusual anatomy for the abdomen of a crustacean, Whitehaves gave it the name Anomalocaris, meaning unlike other shrimps. In 1928, Danish paleontologist Kai, Her Her Kai Henriksen recognized that Tuzoa, a Burgess shale arthropod, which was known from the care, which was only known from a carapace, represented the missing front half of anomalous cars. In 1966, the Geological Survey of Canada began, began a comprehensive reversion of the Burgess shale fossil record 
led by Harry B. Winnington. And in the process of the revision, Winnington and his students, Simon Conway Morris and Derek Briggs, would establish the true nature of anomalous cars and its relatives formally in 1985. Today, at least four named species are known from Australia, Canada, China, and the United States, including A. canadensis, A. whitevisi, A. gigantina, and A. cranbrookensis. Reaching one half to three and a half feet in length, Anomalocaris had a peculiar appearance, with two up to seven inch long, hard but flexible frontal appendages which protruded out of the head of the animal above an unusual disc like mouth known as an oral cone. In front of the and also in front of two large oval shaped compound eyes. It had a softer, wide body which sported flexible flaps on the sides. Each flap sloped below the one more posterior to it. This overlapping allowed the lobes of each on each side of the body to act as a single fin, which, when used in conjunction with its rudder like tail, fernicle, and telson, allowed anomalocaris to swim quite efficiently. In life, anomalocaris dwelled in a variety of habitats from shallow coastal seas to open oceans and would have occupied the niche of apex predator. However, the idea that anomalocaris fed on hard bodied animals such as trilobites has been questioned. Its relatively weak radiodontid mouth parts may not have been able to handle strong mineralized exoskeletons. Instead, Nomocaris may have fed primarily upon jellyfish, worms, and other soft bodied creatures. Another possibility is that Nomocaris fed by grabbing one end of their prey with its oral cone and then using its frontal appendages to twist and rock the other end of the animal, causing the prey's exoskeleton to rupture and allow the predator to access its innards. This behavior may have provided an evolutionary pressure for trilobites to roll up and avoid being flexed until they snapped. As always, take care to my guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Have a good day.